Uh, Hi everyone, uh, my name is Steven Shelton and I'm a blockchain engineer on the Moonbeam team. Uh, before we jump in, uh, just a quick shout out to my colleague Alberto. Um, he created this content and was supposed to be here today, um, but he won't be in until a little closer. Thanks. Uh, he'll be in next week, so. All right, well, what is uh, Moonbeam's role in a multi-chain future? So if you're not familiar with uh, Moonbeam, Moonbeam is a uh, EVM compatible blockchain in the Polkadot ecosystem. And if you're not familiar with Polkadot, Polkadot's big idea is that instead of having one blockchain that's going to do everything really well, what we expect is to see lots of blockchains uh, that do one thing really well or maybe a few things really well. And so true to this, um, Polkadot itself really only does one thing, and that is to provide block validation services to child uh, blockchains. And so we sometimes refer to Polkadot itself as uh, the relay chain or layer zero, and uh, these pair chain or these child blockchains as pair chains or sometimes layer one. And so Moonbeam is itself uh, a an EVM compatible um, pair chain under Polkadot. Uh, but Polkadot does one other thing uh, that's very important, and that is to route messages uh, between parachains. So it can send, so parachains can send messages to each other. They can send messages to the relay chain. Relay chain can send messages to uh, the parachains um, all bidirectionally. Uh oh. Um, loading's not good. Sorry, guys. Driving some technical difficulties. Not sure why we're loading here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. So maybe slideshow isn't working, but... Um... Yeah, Wi-Fi might be having trouble here. What we can do is, uh, I've got the slides here. Oh man. Um, well, maybe I could just continue with this. I know it's really small, less than optimal. Um, so, um, as I was saying, uh, Moonbeam is a pair chain under Polkadot. Polkadot um, routes these messages, we call it XCM. And so, um, uh, one of the other things that Moonbeam uh, does is uh, that it's it's fully EVM compatible, like I talked about. So um, there are a lot of messaging protocols that uh, interact with it and are able to talk to other blockchains. Um, so this puts Moonbeam in a good position where it can kind of act as a point of transmission and talk to uh, not only other pair chains through XCM, but also uh, these messaging protocols. So if one of these other chains wants to talk to a uh, uh, another blockchain or uh, they need to get into the um, pair chain or the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, Moonbeam is a good point of uh, transmission for that. Um, and so, as a good example of this, um, well, so Moonbeam uh, also makes available uh, this XCM feature through uh, to smart contracts through precompile. So, a smart contract is able to use um, XCM capabilities to talk to other parachains in the ecosystem. And so as a good example of this, uh, Lido is able to uh, use Moonbeam's XCM capabilities to invoke staking functionality on Polkadot itself um, through, through, their, through the EVM. And so it can uh, invoke uh, staking functionality on Polkadot and then represent that as liquid staking tokens on Moonbeam itself. Um, and so this provides a, a kind of a, a much better user experience where instead of having to uh, 
go through multiple steps to stake on Polkadot, uh, you can just interact with it through Lido itself. Uh, so what is XCM? Um, well, XCM is really just a, a list of instructions. Um, and uh, it's a list of instructions that one pair chain wants to send to another. And these instructions themselves are very granular and uh, don't necessarily do anything useful. Um, here, I've got Ethernet, USB C. Uh, thank you. Um, so these uh, instructions are, are not very useful in and of themselves. As an example, I might ask you to stand up, and that wouldn't accomplish anything useful. But if I asked you to stand up and walk 10 paces to the left and then flip a switch, I could get you to turn the lights off or on. And um, this is kind of the idea with XEM. So you take these granular instructions and uh, the right combinations of them can do uh, really useful things. So um, one fairly simple uh, example of this would be a token transfer. So uh, I could send an XEM to get uh, a token sent from one relay chain to another. Um, and uh, vice versa. Uh, but maybe a more interesting example is where I invoke uh, native functionality on another parachain um, through these instructions. And we'll take a closer look at that today. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like on Moonbeam. Um, what I've depicted here is uh, a, a user, Alice, on Polkadot. And um, she wants to in invoke some native functionality on Moonbeam. And so uh, what we do is we, we create what we call a multi-location derivative account, uh, which is uh, a way for us to represent Alice on Polkadot as an Ethereum-compatible account ID. Um, and so then once we've done this, we can invoke whatever uh, functionality Alice wants to invoke. Um, is this working now? Nope, bad idea. Um, so once we've done that, we can invoke the functionality that she's requested as though it came from this multi-location derivative account ID that represents her. Uh, and so a more um, specific example is um, remote EVM call. So uh, we can use the same functionality to invoke uh, the EVM on Moonbeam from an XCM message from another parachain. Um, before we dive into that, let's take a quick look. Um, this is probably a little too small to see, but. Uh, what this is really depicting here is uh, a user who wants to send a transaction um, to Moonbeam and have it evoked uh, through the EVM. And um, so this user signs a transaction with ECDSA and sends it to uh, RPC service. And this RPC service um, can then put it into a, a transaction pool where it can be validated. Um, and if it's a valid transaction, it might be applied through the EVM, and we can then see a, a state change occur. Um, so this is all kind of normal, normal stuff here. Now, when it goes through the through XCM, it works a little bit differently. Um, I know it's too small to see here on the right side, but um, basically, uh, the user is going to submit a transaction potentially through another parachain, and the cryptography could be different there. Uh, so we can't make any assumptions that it's ECDSA. It could be SR25519. Um, or there might not be any um, any signature at all. So um, what, this is one of the reasons why we come up with the multi-location derivative account ID. Um, that way we can represent it on our chain in a way we understand. Um, but there are also a couple other changes that we'll have to make uh, to account for this. Um, however, once all of this is done, it can then enter the EVM. And from that point on, it looks exactly like a normal transaction. Um, we finally connected. Hey, look at that. Um, so, um, some of the other differences that we have, uh, there's, there's a global nonce, so since there's no s signature, it's entirely possible for two transactions that have the same fields to produce uh, the same hash and cause a hash collision. And so, um, what we do is uh, we have a global nonce, that way we can salt every transaction with a unique number. Um, also, because there's no signature, there is no uh, EC recover. Um, so. Uh, what we do instead is we take this multi-location derivative account ID that we talked about and we substitute it in the from and the message.sender um, when it goes into the EVM. And then we also do something similar uh, with some of our RPC responses. Uh, and then lastly, we set the gas price to zero. Um, and this is uh, mostly because we have a different mechanism for paying for fees. So when you get into the EVM, you'll see that the gas price is set to zero. Um, so these transactions can still be queried in the normal way. Uh, here's an example of a curl call that's just gonna call get transaction by hash. And uh, 
Such a transaction might look something like this. So in this case, we've replaced the from with the multi-location derivative account ID that we talked about. Uh, we've replaced the gas price with zero. Um, and you'll see that the V, R, and S have been set to some arbitrary constants, and that's because they're entirely unuseful in this case. Um, so I'm gonna walk through an example where we, um, we're going to invoke a Uniswap contract on Moonbeam from Polkadot itself. And uh, here's a link to a tutorial. It's basically the same content with quite a bit more uh, detail if you're interested. So basically what we're gonna walk through is uh, we've got Alice again here on Polkadot and she's going to build an XCM message, send it to Moonbeam. And then when Moonbeam gets this, we're, it's going to calculate its multi-location derivative account uh, to represent her on Polkadot. And then it will invoke the EVM, which we'll call the Uniswap contract, and then we can uh, see that there'll be a swap that happened. Uh, so, to, so to do all this, we're gonna need about four different steps here. Um, and so uh, basically we're gonna take call data that goes to the EVM, and then we need to wrap it in a higher level call, um, and then we need to wrap that in an XDM message. And so uh, this is kind of an encapsulation technique. I kind of think of it as layers of an onion. So the first layer of the onion, like I said, is gonna be our EVM call data. And then the next thing we're gonna to need to do is build up a, what we call a pallet Ethereum XCM call, um, and that will result in another layer of call data. And then from there, we'll need to head over to a Polkadot uh, relay chain and then create a XCM message um, with this call data. And then finally, we can send it and it will head over to Moonbeam. Um, so let's take a look at the first step here. This is um, Uniswap. So what we have here is a Uniswap deployment on our Moonbeam testnet um, along with the UI. And so um, it's, it's worth pointing out here that um, while this looks a little gnarly, uh, in a real world scenario, you would expect this to be all done pro programmatically and this would not be part of the UX. Um, but we're kind of doing it uh, by hand here. So what we do is we go to the UI and we set up a swap and we start interacting with MetaMask, but instead of sending the transaction, what we're gonna do is uh, hit the hex tab here and um, we're gonna scrape this data here. This is the, the low level EVM call data. And so um, now we're gonna dissect it a little bit and replace a couple things. So uh, here's the call data from the last slide and you can see that the function selector maps to swap exact ETH for tokens. Uh, and then there's a number of other fields and we're gonna replace a couple of them. So since we're doing this by hand and it might take a little while, we increase the deadline and we also increase the slippage amount uh, in case the price moves on us. And more, interesting, we also, more interestingly, we also replace the uh, account ID with a multi-location derivative account ID that we talked about. And this again represents Alice on Polkadot. Uh, and so the next thing we need to do is uh, what we call the pallet Ethereum uh, XCM call. So a, a pallet is uh, kind of like a smart contract in that it's, um, it has functions that can be called. Um, and so you can kind of think of it as the same way. So what we do here is, uh, uh, let me explain this UI a little bit. So this is a, a crude UI that, um, that wraps the low level functionality exposed by Moonbeam. Uh, and you'll find the same UI exists for just about every uh, blockchain in Polkadot. Um, so what we're doing here is we create a, uh, a call to pallet Ethereum XCM. We're gonna call the transact function. And then uh, this probably looks a little familiar. The parameters we're gonna pass in uh, look a lot like a, an Ethereum transaction where we have a gas limit. We have an action that is a call as opposed to a create. Um, and then we have a, a contract address that we're gonna specify, a value. And then these input bytes at the end are the, the EVM data, the EVM call data that we just looked at. And so now we've, we're kind of creating the second layer of our onion. Um, we now have call data that represents everything above. That's the Ethereum XCM call, um, including the EVM call embedded into it. And so now what we need to do is take this call data and move over to uh, the Polkadot pair chain, uh, relay chain, um, or really our testnet version of it. Um, and so you see the same UI here, but we are on a different, different blockchain now. And so we have Alice who wants to invoke the uh, XTM palette, and she's gonna call the send function there. And um, there's gonna be quite a few different fields here, so I'm gonna kind of gloss over them. Uh, the first ones uh, here towards the bottom specify basically which chain it's gonna go to. So this specifies that this XTM message should go to uh, Moonbeam. Um, and then from here, we're gonna build up the list of instructions like we talked about earlier. 
Uh, so the first one is withdraw asset, and what this really does is take funds held under the control of Alice and puts them into a holding register, which is kind of a temporary place that exists for the duration of the XCM execution. Um, and the next one is buy execution, and so that takes uh, funds that are held in the holding register and basically uses them to pay for fees. And then the, uh, the interesting part is the transact instruction, and so um, here again you see uh, the encoded uh, bytes. This is our encoded uh, Ethereum XCM call data that we looked at previously. Uh, so now we've taken that and we've moved over to the relay chain and we're putting it all in inside an XCM message. Um, and then uh, finally is, is deposit asset and all this really does is, is refund unspent fees. Um, and so if Alice were to do all this and hit submit, then uh, it would go over to Moonbeam, uh, be unwrapped by the Ethereum uh, XCM palette. Uh, and then it would be, and then the in, inner EVM call data would be sent to the EVM. That would trigger a um, call to the Uniswap contract. And finally, we can see here that a swap occurred. So um, we have our, our tokens that were swapped. Uh, also of interest is that um, we have a gas price of zero, although we do still have um, gas that was used. So there is a gasometer and it is still uh, respected in the normal way. Um, and again, we can call get transaction by hash to use uh, the, the normal uh, Ethereum RPC. And here you can see that uh, we get a response, but the, the nonce has been replaced with the global nonce. We've replaced uh, the from with our multi-location derivative account. Gas price set to zero, still consume some gas, and VR and S are still their, their useless constants. All right, well, um, thank you all very much. Uh, sorry for the, the technical issues earlier, um, but if you're interested in today's slides, uh, there's a QR code at the top right, uh, a bit.ly link at the bottom left. Um, there's a, a QR code to, to the right for some more Moonbeam-related resources, uh, and then some of our socials as well. Um, also want to point out that we will uh, have a booth next week. We'll be at uh, Devtopia Booth R. Um, and I'll also hang around in case anyone is interested in chatting about this, and we might have time to take some questions as well. Um, so is this only to make the call to another EVM that's on the parachain or to go? I, no, it has um, nothing specifically to do with the EVM. So um, it, it basically is a way to send instructions to another chain. And those instructions can do just about anything. They could just move tokens around or they could uh, query some state on that chain. Uh, in our specific case, we're invoking the, the EVM, but that is kind of one specific use case of XCM. So XCM is very flexible. Anything else? What limitations, if any, do you see going to, say, back to Ethereum or even L2s, things like that? Um, well, uh, so XCM is kind of a completely separate thing. So um, I think anything you could do with XCM would be uh, kind of a different thing. So you could kind of add these things together, but they, they don't necessarily... Um, uh, overlap in that way. Okay, so for the remote EVM calls, how do you think about those? Uh, so the remote EVM calls, that's that's uh, another chain sending an XCM message to uh, Moonbeam, and the Moonbeam's going to go in and invoke its EVM. Um, and so that could, for example, interact with a messaging protocol that wants to go to another blockchain uh, and interact with it. Um, that that kind of get at your question? It does. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Appreciate your time.